Here we go, we're live, Aaron. Uh, welcome back, Aaron. Good, finally. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you again. It's been, uh, in case if people have been wondering where we've been, well, Aaron will explain in a minute, but he's been on a uh, big vacation. Um, so that's the reason why we haven't been able to go on live. We've also got an issue too with daylight savings changed here and it's also changed oh, yeah. in the US as well. So the times are all over the place. Casper's confused because he's saying we've changed the time again. Well, this was the usual time we went on, which was 8 p.m. New York time. Yes. Uh, but I'm having a discussion with Amory Mago a fraction early because it's midday here uh, for me now so we'll have to work out what's better for aaron because what time is it there with you aaron nine o'clock is it yeah with me yeah it's nine o'clock because we don't do the daylight saving time so it's just always stayed the same so since the united states you know went back an hour there at eight and i'm at nine so it might be a little too late for me actually yeah. but maybe next week we'll do it at seven o'clock i guess uh yep New York. I mean, I'm 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 whatever, fine. I mean, I, I could go. You could do seven or you could do six. It really just depends on what time you uh, can get back. Uh, so, guys, next week it may be at six p.m. or seven p.m. But we'll let you know uh, because we'll have yeah. to work out what sort of fits in best with Aaron. Obviously, it's daylight. It's morning for me, so it's not really an issue with me. But it, it gets late for Aaron, so um, we'll we'll let you know what time we go on next year. I'll have a discussion with Aaron. Uh, about it what would you guys Indeed. prefer would you prefer um sort of uh 6 yeah. p.m new york time or would you prefer 7 p.m new york time we'll base it on that time yeah let us know uh, let us know uh in the comments down below or in the live chat because i'd love yeah. to know what you exactly. would prefer yourself so aaron what have you been up to tell us about your holiday yeah we've been we traveled uh in italy uh for a couple weeks and of course did uh, lots of photography and if you have not seen our photography you can head on over to let me go live david or, or my desktop and this is our facebook uh group that david started a while ago and i would say this is probably the the best photography uh facebook group because we have a uh, several uh people watching over everything to make sure everything's good and the thing is is if anybody acts up or gets fussy or uh gets you know starts saying bad comments about your photography and all that we go in there and we uh, usually we warn them it's not too bad or just get rid of them completely because we want this place to be for um uh male and female photographers and kids also now i don't know how young you can get because we don't really put too much um you know, provocative stuff on this uh, group here, but it's a place that you can go and be mindful that you or rest assured that you won't get any people ganging up on you or saying how stupid you are. We also want people with any kind of camera you have, whether it's photos or video, and you can just post your work on here and we uh, monitor it so you people don't get all uh, uh, crazy on the photographs like other um, Facebook groups. So head on over there. And one way you can check things out, if you see a photo by somebody that you like, you can go up into the search uh, bar like right up here and type in their name. And I was just going to say you could type in my name there if you want to see our photos from my me and my wife's photos from Italy. You could check those out. Now, every I'm going to go off a of full screen here. Anytime we uh, do this show uh we've almost ha hit our year anniversary of this behind the photo show i always introduce a mug from wherever we traveled me and my wife because we always pick up mugs uh representing other places we've been and this mug is very special because when we were in italy we visited our very own oreo that you guys know if you've been on our uh, facebook group anytime in the last year or so oreos um always posting stuff very nice guy uh we went uh, i'm going to show let me go back to because i can't pronounce his um his town if i show you his town here this is the name of his town and in his town is a beautiful um place uh or what do you call this a spa and here's the name of the spa and in this spa i'm going to show you a photo that i took because I can show you real quick. There's this photo here that sits above um, above the place, above the stairs when you walk up. It's a very beautiful, detailed place in the spa. And spa, how are you say that? And the cool thing about it is, um, let me go back to me. The cool thing about it is when I, uh, when we went and go, uh, went to visit Oreo, he picked us up and he surprised me with a little, uh, a mug with that photo on here. Now this photo is the one he actually took. So he actually took this photo, had it put on a mug, 
and then presented me with a little gift. So, Oreo, thank you so much. You've been amazing. One of the nicest guys that I've ever met. Took us around to some castles, took uh, photos. We had to run because we only had a few hours with him. But yeah, he gave me this mug, and it's very special to me because it's an actual photo he took of a photo that I took in this beautiful place. So thanks, Oreo, for the mug. And um, that's my little mug jive for the intro of the show. So our... Our trip was amazing. Check out my photos. What about you, David? What have you been doing since I was gone? Because I'm kind of behind the times oh, here. Oh, stacks, actually. Well, a lot of reviews. I've had stacks of gear uh, given to me. By the way, too, I am <laughs> I'm doing a test. This is to see if I do get demonetized. I'm not going to mention what's going on here because that might get me demonetized. Um, but <laughs> we're nearly, well, what are we? We're really heating up now. We're not in summer, and tomorrow I think it's 104 degrees. So... Um, we're starting to hit the uh, typical Aussie Celsius. summer, um, 40 Celsius, I think, tomorrow. We're 35 or something today, wow. I think. Um, so I'm, I'm having a drink. Let's see what happens. If we get demonetized, I'm going to have to hide it in my cup again, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, it's better on his show than mine because we. The way, if you're new to this channel or this show, for one, give this uh, video a thumbs up, <clears throat> subscribe to David Osler's channel, and subscribe to mine because not only do I do my own amazing content, but... We do this show on his uh, channel, then the next week it's on my channel, unless something happens and we have to do it on his channel again or mine or whatever, but that's how it usually works. So check me out in the link in the description. He'll In the description, he'll put a link to my channel uh, in there too. And by the way, I'm always drinking coffee in my mugs and usually coffee from different places. And I don't remember where I got this, but we were at the largest Starbucks the first large Starbucks, I forget what you call the Starbucks Selects or something, it's in Italy, in uh, Milan, actually. And we got the, oh, man, the 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 brew that they did in that this specific Starbucks was really good. That's not this because we drank it before the show started. But anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, coffee. So coffee in mine. And, uh, well, you, you go ahead and tell them what was in yours. What was that, a Corona you showed? Yeah, it's Corona I'm drinking. Uh, it's uh, 12 o'clock here midday, so I'm legally allowed to drink <laughs> Now, this is one review, Aaron, I just put up. Have a check out of this review. Yeah, I saw that this one. This slider Very is cool. seriously the best slider I've ever used. Now, I have Elder Chrome ones. I've got all other ones uh, that I've purchased over the years, yeah, and I did purchase those. This was sent to me, though, but I'm not just saying it's good because of that. The thing I loved about this, have a look at the review, is that it has this tension that can hold the camera if it goes down on its own, and it makes using a slider really easy because the problem yeah, is cool. with manual sliders... I could never do it. Look, I, I was never skilled enough to get a really smooth looking slide because they tend to be free and then you, you tend to be racing and slowing down. Like it's hard to get that consistent uh, speed all the way through it. Um, but this has this tension that stops you from being able to move it too fast. So you've got to push against it reasonably hard because it has gears in it uh, and it's fantastic. Like it, it's... I think this is going to change the way I shoot. Now, I've also got a motorized slider as well, but the problem with that is it's hard to lug around, whereas this yeah, that's is thing. dead simple. You know, I mean, it's got fold-out legs that you can lift down so it can stand on its own, so you can do low shots of the bride, uh, stuff like that. And I think this is going to be my go-to um, slider. I think they're about $260 or $70. I think I can't, might be a fraction more, but... Built like a tank, love it. So I've got a review of that up there that you can check out. I'm gonna show another bit of gear that uh, I've got a battery and stuff uh, because Aaron's got a story that we'll quickly look at later on and I'll show you the version of that uh, that mm. I've just got. So I've had stacks of things that um, have been put on there. Hope you're enjoying them. Um, I've still got some yeah, to post, they're... which is some uh, ND filters I've got to show that are coming up. I'm also gonna get that Insta360 X, I think it is, uh, one or something. That's coming this week. Mm, uh, and I'm getting another cool. uh, Luma Cube as well that I want to do a shoot um, outside because I've asked them to send me one with the gels and stuff like that so I can do a night shoot with that with a <coughs> model. So uh, it should be interesting. Some interesting reviews coming up, Aaron. Yeah, those Luma Cubes are pretty cool. I saw them at the um, Photo uh, Plus Cheers. show that I was at in New York before our trip. And they had a booth there, and I was looking at all the things. And those things are really bright. Of course, since it's a small um, light source, of course, it's going to be, you know, pretty harsh. But like me and you've talked about before, I I've been using more bare flash than I ever did before. So you can use, you know, harsh light to your advantage at times to get a certain look. So those <laughs> those little Lumacues are cool. And if you could probably just 
throw those through uh, some small diffuser of some sort and get it close right out of frame. And I think they actually, when I saw their presentation, it looked pretty cool. Yeah, so that's what I'll test. I'm looking forward to seeing your other review. Yeah, I'm going to test that to see how, uh, if I can get it soft. But you know what, I don't mind. I've changed the whole way I shoot now. I use more harsh light than anything now. And as long as you pose Me the too. body correctly and the face correctly, it's never an issue. But it gives me a point of difference against... Uh, what other photographers are using where soft light exactly. seems to be the main thing. I know in fashion, it's nearly always hard light. So, you know, it's Yeah, it's beauty changing. dishes with yep. hard light, speculars. Um, if you look, uh, now one type of photography that I just can't get into, uh, but I see a lot of fashion uh, magazines have, and that is um, on-camera flash, just shining right at them. I, I just still don't like no. that look, but it's actually... It's been quite popular in that fashion uh, type of industry for a while. Um, that's got to be like the easiest type of photography if you just have it there and you don't got to worry about nothing. But I just don't like it. But hard light off to the side, uh, yeah, I actually like it. We did a shoot in Puerto Rico, uh, Old San Juan, a couple weeks ago with just hard light, and it, it looks great. And everybody was like, wow, that's hard light. People couldn't believe it just because if you, if you do it right, it looks great. So let's just say hello to a few people anyway oh guys too by the way we're only i'm getting close now to only two months away from visiting you guys in the u.s uh really yes, excited about up. that it's coming up really fast can't wait uh looking forward to meeting as many of you as possible i know gerald and langston are organizing some things over there uh for us to shoot um we're going to also shoot just to let you know as well we're going to uh obviously i'm going to santa monica for a week uh we're going to organize some shoots around there and probably la but then we're going to vegas and we're going to uh shoot in vegas but because we're going to wppi but then we're going to do a road trip mm -hmm. through the desert uh to all different places right through uh the desert there and anyone is welcome to come with us um just basically let us know that you want to join us uh, because it's going to be fantastic. We're going to go to some amazing locations through the deserts out there. Can't wait. It's going to be so exciting. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to probably go to Yosemite and San Francisco. So um, let us know if you'd like to join up and have a drink and a catch up and everything else. I'd love to meet you all. Hopefully I can meet quite a number of you at uh, WPPI as well. So it's so exciting. Can't wait. Uh, only yeah, about Vegas, two months away. Vegas is fun. Yeah. Yeah, Vegas is fun. Me and my wife go, uh, we... We go on business trips there every year, and yeah, it's uh, it's quite the place to do photography, especially uh, especially if you, of course, the city thing. But if you just head out into the desert, man, there's just so much beautiful things. Um, Gerald, I think, what was that last year he went? Yes, I forget the name of that one place, but it's just yeah. Are you guys going back to that same yes, place? Yes, we're going to go all through the, the deserty areas. I think we'll probably go out to the canyon, and we're going to hire a car. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and just travel to all different locations that Gerald knows about. I've always been a Western Sweet. follower, so I can't wait to have a look <clears throat> at some of these locations that we use in Westerns and stuff. You know, like it's totally different uh, scenery to what I get here in Australia. So even though we have deserts, Very it's cool. a different looking desert. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, and like I said, anyone's welcome to tag along. Uh, just follow along. We can go in a big convoy. Um, no money is involved. Um, so it should be fantastic. And, you know, we can all get together and we can give something back to the uh, people that follow me, particularly from the US. I'm really excited about doing that. The year after, we'll come to Europe. Uh, so we'll meet all the Europeans cool. uh, in that trip as well. Um, so let, okay, should we start yes, the we show? Should. It's 15 minutes in. Let's go we officially over. start the show. Um, yeah, so we'll go to the first story, Adam, because I wanted to talk about this. Uh, I'll switch over. I put the time for show start. Well, actually, you can do the first story, Aaron, actually, uh, photographing okay. a wedding. So we'll just put All it up All right, that. that's done. So this was an interesting story that I saw Aaron come up. It was, uh, and I'll, we'll put the links down below. I'll stick them all down below for you. <clears> but uh, this is talking about photographing an entire wedding at ISO 5000 after dark. So if you read Crazy. this article, what this guy has done is basically used natural light. And I'll talk about this in a minute because this is sort of a way that I've gone now. I've changed my shooting yeah. style. So I'll talk about this as well. But there's a whole video that you can watch uh, if you want to watch it. Uh, he's saying that he's using ISO 5000. It would have been totally impossible before because of noisy mess, etc. Yeah. But due to the cameras, he's using a Nikon D850 and the 85 1.4 lens. I was able to get enough light and keep your shutter speed at 1 100th uh, for the majority of the shots. And then, like I said, if you can watch a whole video about this, but I wanted to talk about it from my aspect of how I'm shooting weddings now. So um, I, I'll tell you how I, I mostly do it, Aaron, and, and you can sort of chime in yeah, how you tell. feel. But 
years ago, I did always use on-camera flash, and I'll be using that in weddings uh, and everything all the time. Now, I very rarely now use uh, flash anymore for evening type shots. I'm more using the continuous light or high ISO. Now, I've changed my thinking in the fact that because cameras now are capable of using such high ISO, as long as you expose correctly, the noise is very minimal. Now, what I mean by that is you can't underexpose. So during the daytime, I often do underexpose a little bit to bring back the shadows and maintain the highlights. Well, you can't do that if you're dealing with high ISO images and dealing with nighttime because the second you underexpose, where's the noise live? It lives in the shadows. So that, that's one of the things that mm -hmm. you've got to understand. The second you try and raise your shadows in a high ISO image, uh, it will look terrible because it'll be noise like crazy everywhere. And people often say exactly. to me, David, how do you get such good results using high ISO? And that's because I correct, I expose correctly, even a fraction over, you can always come down a little bit, but still protect the highlights. But I now yep. tend to mostly use continuous light. And what I use is I use this, and I'll just switch to me. So uh, I'm using basically something like this. So... This is, now you can use anything that has continuous lighting. I mean, I'm not saying you have to go pro photo, but uh, you can use anything that's got continuous lighting. You know, you could use this sort of thing if you wanted to, which, um, you know, these little lights that you could use as well that are available. Um, but I tend to just use this, and what I'll do is I just turn the LED light on. I'll bring the power down. Now then I can adjust the color balance. If we look behind me, you'll see that it's warm at the moment. That's very warm. If I go the other way, it'll go very blue. So I'm using this now to give my lighting uh, at night. So I'm not using flash at all. So I'm just looking at it like it's daylight, Aaron. So what I'm tending to do is just have this on, balance it to the conditions, and then I shoot from there. Now I can even leave this on a, a pole and I can control it from my phone. I can change the color temperature and, and the lighting strength. Now, what are the benefits of doing this? Well, there's, there's a couple. Let me just switch this off. Um, there's a couple of benefits to doing it this way. I can shoot as the conditions, uh, I can match the uh, ambient lighting that's already there. Now it's hard sometimes to do that with flash effectively. You've got to use gels uh, and everything else. So it's quite hard to balance ambient light and just keep firing away because you, sometimes you've got to wait for the flash to resync uh, and everything else. Right. The beauty of doing it this way, I shoot it like it's daylight. So for me, it's no different than shooting during daylight. I just up my ISO uh, and shoot from there. And in fact, I went to a workshop recently from Yervant uh, who's a, uh, one of the top 10 wedding photographers in the world. I think he's been rated as probably the best. But um, he was saying to me, the way he works now is he locks his aperture, and I think he usually shoots around 5.6. He'll not change his aperture, and he won't change his shutter speed. Guess what he does? He changes his ISO. ISO. Yeah. So that's yeah. the only thing that he changes. So he's shooting in aperture mode, and all he will do is change, uh, sorry, he's shooting in manual, and all he'll do is change his ISO to balance his exposure correctly. And he's using the exact same light as I've got. Now, like I said, you don't need a pro photo. You can use any continuous light if you want to go that way, as long as it has some control over ambient color temperature. But I think the high ISO cameras now have changed the whole playing game, and I, I don't know if enough people are, are a sort of pushing the ISO high enough that you can go, you know, easily 6400 if you expose correctly on the latest A7 III, uh, you know, the A7R III, um, and cameras like that can push uh, 6400 if you expose correctly, and that's the trick is to expose yeah. correctly. Uh, what do you think about that, Aaron? Yeah, that's uh, that sounds good. I like that. I like that idea. I use flash, but I don't like to use flash. I rather use natural light as much as possible. As we, if, if you do check out all of our photos from our trip and any of my photography, a lot of it is just natural light. So I've never embraced the continuous lighting yet for photography. Uh, I, I did video for many years and of course LED, well, uh, constant light was something I always used. But once I got into photography, I started using uh, constant light but got rid of it real quick because the fact that I like things small gear and I can have a very small flash that does way more uh, power and brightness than uh, any LED light that I can get. So I've always still either went natural light or flash. but. This article is kind of kind of an eye opener, and what you were just saying is that 
it would be nice to lock down those features, use constant light, and either position it your light yourself or have an uh, assistant position for you because it's going to look like flash anyways. And in lower light situations, you don't need the power of a flash. So I'm going to kind of look into that because I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, you wouldn't have any mistakes with the flash. You don't you, you don't have to say like, oh, that was bad. Move it because you already see it with your eyes and there it is. And so, yeah, I'm going to look into that. Uh, low light situations might work really good with uh, constant light. Now there is a, what is that one brand? There's a brand that has an LED light that actually does flash. I can't uh, remember that brand. It's uh, it's, oh, it's one of the um, known brands. It's pretty big and it has. Um, oh yes, you're talking about you the know, AOS. Barn doors the on Neo, it. Neo, isn't it? You're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I think a Gilbert uses some of those. I don't know if the smaller units have that flash capability or not, but those actually are kind of cool as well. Uh, I don't know if they're inexpensive or not, but yeah, I'll, I'm going to definitely kind of look into that for lower light scenarios where uh, LEDs can work. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, I think it, it probably is the future. Now, I don't, I'm not saying I don't use flash because I do. I mean, I use yeah, yeah. flash all the time during the day or if I'm trying to overpower the exactly. sun. But but the point is I'm really starting to move away from that now and use continuous lighting more, but particularly also because I'm shooting a lot of video as well. See, the beauty of this is yeah, the fusion yes, thing. if I'm shooting video like, and stills at the same time, I can just move over that's and good. just keep shooting. And I don't have to worry about that bit of, oh, she, you know, the, the bride's not lit. Uh, because they're lit constantly. I mean, Kerry knows exactly where yeah. to stand. And the beauty is, unlike Flash, with Flash you're always guessing because you never know what it's going to give you until That's you it. actually take your exposure. But with continuous light, whatever you see through your viewfinder or your EVF is the result that you're going to get. So... That's one of the beauties about moving away from using, uh, you know, fl the flash side of things. And I, I think it's really important that people understand that, that I do probably think this is the way uh, of the future. It's not going to replace flash. Yes, I agree. But it, it may be uh, used a lot more than what it is now. And, and like I said, the thing you've got to understand too is brides pay an awful lot for their reception venues usually. And if you're overpowering that with flash and replacing what that ambient look is, you know, I mean, the worst thing yeah. a photographer can do is, is go into a beautiful reception that the bride's booked and they see this gorgeous lit, uh, lovely, warm environment. And then all of a sudden a photographer will come in that doesn't know what they're doing. They overpower it with flash and that whole beautiful ambient lighting has gone. And that atmosphere is then you destroyed. Yeah, usually that's due to the the bouncing of the yeah. light, which just, you know, you bounce it, it just everything. So uh, what I typically do is use um, a more of a directional type flash. So it's just kind of lighting up the, 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 the intended target uh, per se and balancing that background with the, the shutter speed or ISO or whatever. So you're still getting the ambient, but you're lighting them up at the same time. And that would be perfect for uh, continuous light, just like you said. And if you're doing video, and that light's already there. You just switch to video, and you're now you're filming video, and the light looks the same. So, pretty good, uh, pretty good thing going on. I think that you got there, and I think you're right about more people moving toward continuous light for weddings. Uh, if you're outside, well, you probably still have to stick with flash. But uh, yep. The interesting thing is too, that. and this is a good point because um, Langston said in here. Uh, the only thing I hate with constant lights is I'm giving the iPhone users oh. good lighting. And that is a good point, Langston. Oh. Uh, I, I used to worry about that, but I don't worry about it anymore because it, it's – look, you do – They're still not going to yeah, get the good shot. You do you know. still improve the look of their – uh, images, but remember, usually when I'm shooting at receptions and things like that, I'm shooting at uh, an open aperture. Um, so I'm often yeah. shooting, say, with my 24 GM. That's often what I'll shoot with, and I shoot at 1.4 often. Uh, so I'm going to get that beautiful rendering in the background that the iPhone just possibly cannot get. The ISO that and, I'm using. Yeah, you go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, and the compression yeah. and uh, the the photographer's eye. If you're a good photographer, you know, like, ooh, that looks cool because I got the lamp in the background. And this, where an iPhone is just like, rank, rank, just all these other awkward things. So, you know, yeah, you're improving their crappy comp composed photos, I guess uh, I'm trying to say. Whereas the photographer has this really nice look to it with the compression and everything else going on there. Um, the other thing I would have to say, too, is as far as continuous light, it can be annoying at times if you have a light constantly in people's yeah. face going around. You've got people squinting, maybe. Uh, you know, you just got to have you got to know, you know, to get it up high enough and in an angle to where it's not 
over your shoulder or something where the people's like squinting and trying to smile. So, you know, you just got to know how to use constant light. So it's just kind of a different thing. But anyways, flash behind you a lot of times isn't going to look good either. Once it does go off, maybe it's not annoying, but it doesn't look good. So you do kind of have to rethink on how to use it to where it won't be annoying. Also, the lights you're talking about, are they, I wonder if someone has a product like this, can you have it on like a boom pull and turn it on and off when needed? Yes. Um, yeah, I can turn it know, off so with my assisting... phone, Aaron. Oh, yeah, so you can have it yeah. off, and then when you're ready, like, oh, hey, let's let's get this going, and they just turn yeah. it on, and you know, you don't have to have it just on while you're moving around everywhere when you're not even yeah. using it. You so know? what I so, do is I tend to, Kerry will, will have it on a, uh, a pole. Now, she can then have it up fairly high, and she'll have the iPhone app, and then she can keep turning it on yeah, and off. See, so good. she'll just keep it on and off when it needs to uh, be used. Brilliant. So yeah, so it has that wireless feature as well, which is which is fantastic. Uh, and I, I just love it because it, it's changed totally the way I shoot now. All of my reception photos match the ambient beautifully, uh, that's, and that's I think good. it's not over flash because half of the time it is really hard to get really good flash, like like and match it with the ambient all the time. Like you've got to yeah. gel it and all this sort of stuff. Well, I just don't need to do that anymore, and it's it's super quick. Um, I just up the ISO, and as long as you're using a reasonably fast lens, like I said, something like the G Master 24, um, you, you don't have to raise the ISO much at all, uh, to be honest. Like, it's not like I'm running this at full power, the Pro Photo. I'm probably only using it way yeah. down low because the ISO is up a reasonable amount. I expose correctly, and therefore the noise is minimal. Uh, and it's, you know, it, it's, it's great. Now, I think what people should do is just try it just to see what you can get. Try something different. Remember, also, flash can be really annoying, too. If you're just firing off flashes constantly, that can be annoying, yeah. and it's really annoying for videographers. This is another thing that people don't oh, understand yeah, yeah. is videographers That's hate true. flash because it wrecks their video. It's, they yeah, love me. Yeah, because you have the... Yeah. Yeah. They love me, Aaron, when I work it's with true. videographers because it's lit. They can use my same lighting, or I sometimes use yeah. theirs. Uh, and there's none of that flash that's going off that wrecks the video for these people. And if you, that's yeah. a point I haven't yeah. thought about. So it's a big one. Uh, you know, now talking about uh, exposing <laughs> right, I think a lot of people are so scared. They've been so scared into using ISO. I mean, I always try to use the lowest ISO possible. That's just what I do. If I can't, I raise it. But I'm not scared to raise it. Um, I think a lot of people are underexposing their photos because, you know, they've got their shutter speed kind of like where it has to be to get sharp images and no motion blur. And they've opened their lens up all the way, but yet it's still dark. And they're like, ah, but I don't want to raise the ISO because of noise. And then they take the that's photo the and mistake. then they raise it anyways later yeah. in post. Yeah, I think that's where people ask you, like, how do you get those photos? And that's it. Just if you... If you're getting a photo, just get the exposure. Uh, open your lens up wide yep. as possible, I guess. And of course, you're going to get shallow depth of field. If you don't want it, you've got other issues there. But get in as much light as you can with the shutter speed, not motion blur, and just raise the ISO to get that proper exposure because I think people are afraid of noise so much that they're underexposing for that purpose. That's the so problem. just get over it. Yep. See. Yeah, raise that ISO to get your thing. But I wouldn't use the ISO just let's raise it all the way and then play around with the other just get your other settings like that uh, irving guy get those settings and then use the iso to get the exposure and it's going to come out pretty good and the algorithms now with uh not just the sensor but uh the noise reduction you're going to get good images i mean yeah that, that's know, the thing that's my i point. always work it out from i'll balance for the exposure so i'll try and use the least amount of iso possible to get the ambient exposure correct yeah. that, that's the way that i work mm -hmm. so the ambient is always the most important thing. Get that exactly correct. Yeah. Then I'll get Kerry to add the lighting onto my subject that's in front and balance that mm -hmm. subject with the background, with the lighting. Then you just fire away. Once that's yeah. done, as long as Kerry doesn't change her um, distance from the subject, everything then is beautifully lit. But like I said, the issue is that, and this is what people don't understand, and this is why I was interested when I saw that, because I thought ISO is nothing as long as... Uh, 5,000 is nothing as long as you expose correct. I wouldn't want to shoot that yeah. though. I'd, I like to sort of try and get around 3,200 to 1,600 if possible. But, but uh, yeah, he was pushing yeah, it. The, the issue is that <clears throat> as long as the, the way people make a mistake is they expose like they do during the day. They, they know that these cameras yep. have big dynamic range and they know that they can raise the, uh, the yeah. exposure later on. But you can't do that mm -hmm. in low light. That's that's the thing that people have to understand. That's, yeah, that's fine in daylight, but it's no good in low light. You have to expose a little bit to the right, which means, 
expos are fraction over or dead on if you're dealing with it, high it, ISO. Yeah. Yep. And as long as you do that, you'll mm -hmm. be amazed at the results you can get with all of the latest cameras. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's really good. So, yep, that's really good to know. I was going to say something about constant light also, and I don't remember what it was. Cheers, so everyone. If I think of it, I'll bring it up. Okay, so are we ready for the yep, next story? Yep, let's go into this one, because I thought this was an interesting one. I thought we could all share this together. Um, we'll come back to the Q&A a little bit later, guys, and go through some of what you're saying in the live chat. Um, this one was 10 tips I wish I knew 10 years ago as a photographer, uh, and I thought that we yeah. could look at this. Um because I thought it was interesting. And some things, yeah, I think, yeah, it's pretty obvious, like build a website with purpose. And these are things that you hear mm -hmm. all the time about, but there's a couple mm -hmm. of things that I thought a little bit further down may be interesting. And I thought this was a really interesting one. And I think <clears throat> this is a great point for new photographers. It says, buy one good camera and forget about gear. Now that should also be lenses as well. Now, I think, why this is really important to understand is I think too many people are focused on gear all the time and they're not really ever utilizing the camera to its full extent that it can be used. Now, it's okay if you're experienced. Oh my gosh, you're crazy. But I'm going to say the same you thing. Know, it, yeah, it's, the so the thing is that if you have a really good camera at the beginning, what I would do is concentrate yeah. your time on doing other things and buying another camera the second it comes out. Do workshops, go traveling, yeah. keep shooting, do anything other than just going out and buying another camera all the time because it will not make your photography better. Uh, it's things like understanding art that will make it better. Uh, and mm -hmm. I often say to people, if you have a good body, that should really last you uh, a while. You're better off to buy a decent lens than you are to go and buy another body because guess what? A lens will make way more difference than a, a new body will, always, because it's nearly always about the lenses. Uh, why do you think that uh, bodies never ever get good resale value? That's because they replace them all the time. The lenses always hold their resale value because mm -hmm. they very rarely change and they're often as good the day you buy them as the day you, you probably almost die. They'll, they'll last a lifetime if you get a good one. Um, but yeah. I think this is a really good point. What do you think, Aaron? You, you said you were going to say something about well, that. Yeah, it's funny because when you shared this link with me before the show and I read the article, that's the one thing that jumped out uh, to me. And although I've had many cameras, I was never really searching for a camera that's going to make me better or whatever. As far as cameras are concerned, I I'm always on the search for one that just I, I that I just feel like when I shoot it, I'm not wrestling with anything, you know. And so that was my kind of thing. But it's true about uh, I, I know people. I'm not going to say any names, but I know a few people that. Uh, that's all they do is they just all into the gear and they really that's all they're into like I'm into gear But I do a lots of photography. I, I work like five days a week doing photography So I'm like definitely doing photography sometimes I post some gear related thing and someone says just get out and shoot I, I trust me. I shoot all the time, but there are people who that's all they do now. How many people like get into like Okay, they, they look at a scene, and, okay, they wanna get into photography. What was their main motive? I think majority of the people's motive of getting into photography is maybe they're going somewhere and they see something pretty or and they go, you know what, I would love to buy a camera and take photos of this pretty stuff I see. That's their first initial uh, re thinking is, ooh, pretty stuff, I wanna get a camera to capture that stuff. I don't know anybody yet who their first idea of getting into photography is, I want to learn all the details about a lens and in the in the sensor and the bokeh of of a camera. I, uh, it's always I want to capture what I see, not like ooh cameras. But there are some people who get sucked into that, where ooh I want to get into photography because I want to take I want to capture that beautiful flower and that butterfly and uh, maybe a friend's wedding and stuff. And then once they get on YouTube, they start searching what camera's good for me, and then they see all the, you know, the 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 one percent different in bokeh in one lens over another, and it gets so technical where now they've just fell into, they're just all tech and they don't even take any photos or video. I do know people like that, and that's all they do is research photo uh, camera gear all day and and get all caught up in the camera gear and they don't take any photos. So when I read that, I was like, that's absolutely perfect, and. My first camera when I got here into Puerto Rico 10 years ago was a, a getting into video was a Canon T2i. Guarantee you, I could still have a Canon T2i today if I liked it. You know, I 
I've been through so many cameras, I never really like a lot of them. But a Canon T2i in your hands, David, and in my hands, with a good lens on it, nobody would ever know the difference from what you're shooting. They're just not. So if you're first starting out, get a camera that you like to use. I mean, that's my important thing. And what I'm kind of finding out is I want a camera that I love to use. And that camera can last you for a long time. When new cameras come out, they come out with features to make maybe photographer photography easier. But in the right hands and the right lighting, it's I don't think you ever notice. So yeah, get a camera that you love, the the feeling of it and how it works. And that might take a couple times to get it right. But once you do, the camera can last you for a long, long time. I mean, a T2i today would look the same in our hands than anything else. Yeah, I mean... It, do you it's, agree? Yes, I do. <laughs> I mean, it's... Look, I'm not attacking people that have the money to go out, obviously have the funds to go out and purchase stuff. Well, that's that's good on yeah, you. That's fine. fine. If you like I'm it. talking about yeah. people that are just getting into the industry. And the problem exactly. is that the worst thing you can do if you're trying to start a business, I, I can tell you, the worst thing you can do is get a loan mm. for a camera or gear. I, I mean, if you go into debt yeah. to, to try and run a business nowadays particularly, yeah, to yeah, start. you're destined to fail. And and this is the thing that I'm, I'm yeah. so trying to true. Like, um, Photomix says, nobody on YouTube wants to hear your camera is fine. Don't even bother with my affiliate links. Nah. Uh, so the, the thing is here that I'm trying to say, for particularly for new photographers I, I, starting, you're far better off to try and learn that camera fully. Don't go into debt to try and buy a mm -hmm. new one straight away. Like, and yeah, that's so. But important. I also want to know. I also would love to know people's opinions about this too. Is this now why the camera companies are starting to struggle though? Because the issue may be now that, particularly with cameras, that we may have got to the point where what we've got now is good enough for what most people really need to use. I mean, uh, if you look at how the A7 III is sold and even though Sony have, have released a lot of other cameras out there, I guarantee they're not selling like what the a7 III is. I mean, they are dearer, but the the I don't think the uptake of the a9 II is going to be incredible because the a9 is already good enough. I don't think that the uptake of the a7R4 will be massive due to the fact that a lot of a7 III users are happy enough out there. We mm -hmm. seem to only get incremental upgrades that I would think at the moment that if you are thinking about jumping to a next camera, you'd have to say, well, am I better off to go with one that's like an A... Say, say for instance, you were looking at, should I go out and buy, buy the A9 too? Well, you might be happy enough, unless you're a sports shooter, to go and buy the A9, which is an incredible discount at the moment. And you can also then, mm -hmm. with the money you're saving, go out and buy a lens with that instead of uh, paying all that money uh, for an A9 II, which for most users out there, you may not use those features that are out there. Now, I'm not attacking people that have gone out and bought them. If you can afford it, good on you. But I'm just trying to say yeah, exactly. to people that are starting that it might be better to concentrate more on the art. Remember, at the end mm -hmm. of the day, the only thing that's going to be different to you, to anyone else out there, is your understanding of art. Because at the end of the day, the camera doesn't take the photo. You're the one that takes the photo. It's your brain and feeling that, that takes that image. Uh, no matter what mm -hmm. you're using, if you're a good photographer, Jerry Guionis did a whole wedding album and he won an award at WPPI for that wedding album that was shot with an iPhone. Uh, and that tells you yeah. that it's more about the art than it is the gear. And that's what I'm trying to say yeah, to that's people. What yeah. That's what, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. It's not the camera. You can you If you know your art and you know how to get amazing uh, photographs that move people and they look at them like, wow, and it's just... I mean, it doesn't matter really. So yeah, like you said, do not get into debt thinking you're gonna make a career out of it. Just get something decent, something. I, here's the thing. If you have a camera store, that's the best place to go because you can feel it out. But even then, once you get a camera, uh, I'm subject to that. After I use it for a while, I just start wrestling with certain things. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, I like the other camera because I didn't wrestle with it. And that might take some time, but definitely don't go into debt trying to get the greatest yeah. and latest. I seen Ike put something up here is what about, you know, upgrading to that Sony a7R4? It has a better grip and I can crop. Yeah, I thought I was going to be able to crop on certain cameras too. And then you find out you just never do. And I realized this, David, that a lot of comments that I see, uh, including myself, uh, looking for new cameras, a lot of what people I see and in, in myself is we're full of what if, you know, 
I want to get that camera because what if I get caught in a low light situation? I want to get that high megapixel camera because what if I get a client that wants something super large and put on a five story building? It's a bunch of what ifs and I've been down those what ifs. And then if I look, I have a pretty long career now since I was 14 doing photography. Well, not a career in the early ages, but doing photography for so long, most of those what ifs never came about really, you know, to be honest with you. So, um, I don't know. What do you think about that? You think a lot of people are, are buying cameras because it's the newest thing because what if yeah, or I do. am I, I the only I one think, that has a yeah. – I'm full of what if. I think the problem is <laughs> my what ifs I get happen. sucked in by it, you know, and I'm trying to resist yeah, that now. I mean, I, I, I would mm-hmm. – you know, I could have easily gone out and bought the A7R4, which I don't really need. This is the thing like I – I yeah. don't really need it. I noticed Manny Ortis is just selling his A7R 3 and he's going back because he says the perfect camera for him is the A7 III and he's selling all his other stuff and just keeping the A7 III. Yeah. I, I think that, that what I'm trying to say to people is you will make more money if you concentrate on art than you ever mm-hmm. will if you concentrate on gear. And this this is what I'm trying to say and that's to gonna, you. Yeah. yeah, and it's going to cost you more because you're doing yeah. that. And you're going to get a camera that's just more than you ever need. And I found that out with the Sony a7R 3 My idea was like, ooh, what if I want to get into landscape photography? And what if I want to crop those? And I've said this on, on videos here. I've never, for one, I've, I'm so into portraits and shooting people, whether it's in photo or video, that I never can get into or have time for the um, uh, landscape stuff, nor have I ever since cropped one. So I'm, I'm full of what if. So it's basically get a camera, find out what you want to shoot. Like, uh, are you into portrait? Are you into macro? Are you in, and get a camera that's going to do that for you that you like and just stick with it. And yeah, I'm like you, I'm kind of resisting those uh, what ifs and getting the newest thing when a T2i can still give me great photos, I guarantee it, if I had one in my hand. Yeah. But, of course, I sold it because I wanted the next new thing. But, like I say, from experience, please, if you were dealing with starting up, like I said, if you're a hobbyist mm-hmm. or whatever, it doesn't matter, and Super you've got exposable important. income, it's fine to go out and buy whatever you like. And I understand that's yeah, like a hobby. It's like mm-hmm. buying a new car or whatever you want to do. That's totally understandable. But I'm saying if you're dealing from this from trying to get, as say, to be a full-time photographer, to make a, a living out of this industry... Uh, you really should more concentrate on the art side of things. That will get Absolutely. you way more work than it will ever by, say, going out and buying the new gear. Particularly, whatever you do, if the one thing that you can take off me is do not go into debt to finance your That's, photography business yep. because uh, it's a certain way that you're going to lose the passion for the job because as soon as that novelty wears off with that new gear – and you're still yeah. paying that money each week, mm. and you haven't got the money coming in, you'll lose the love for photography. And this is the thing I'm trying to say to you is that, you know, try That's and it. save up, go in and buy the, the best gear that you can afford at that time and make that gear work. And and you will probably find that most pros, most photographers that are running businesses, the ones that I know that are running full-time businesses like me, they're still running um, Canon, um, old Canon yes. digital SLRs. They're, they're not purchasing... Uh, cameras mm-hmm. to upgrade all the time. You know, the people that upgrade nearly all the time are the ones that are doing it for a hobby that have that disposable income. The ones that are yeah, doing it for true. businesses don't have that money to put into uh, their cameras. Like, you would be amazed at the number of uh, work the people I know who are running weddings uh, and stuff like that that are still using 5D Mark IVs. Yeah, me too. I- uh, almost almost everybody I know has like the older gears just because it's not a good business decision to upgrade to more expensive stuff that you know is not going to – what's it going to do for you? You know, it's not going to make your photography better unless you're getting into a different genre of photography. Like if you're on a oh, – I don't know, some – a full frame, a form, a medium format camera. Now you're going to get into wildlife. Of course, that's not. Yeah. Then you should up. But if you're not doing that, yeah, man, I've just save the money. Like David said, get the money that you can afford now with without going into debt, and it's going to do you good. And just learn techniques and and all that, and put all your time and effort learning that instead of what's the newest thing uh, on that. But you know what, YouTube, YouTube. Um, views really tell you where everybody's at they want to see the gear stuff yeah. i mean that's just that's just well it's the interesting because but... uh photo mix said there i told some friends earlier it's easy to mo- promote gear that you don't have to pay for and see that's even like me i mean i get stuff sent to me now due to the fact that i'm on youtube and everything else uh, 
some of the gear I would pay for, like after I've looked at that slider and stuff, I would pay for it. But some of that gear that I get sent, I, w I would not buy. I mean, I might like it, but I couldn't afford to go out and buy all that stuff yeah. all the time because I'm running a business and there's no way I could afford to run it. All I can do is take that gear and then talk to you about <clears throat> how I think it may suit your needs. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to sell quite a lot of the stuff that I've had previously, like the sliders I've purchased recently, uh, and I have purchased some of those, uh, apart from the motorized one, I'm probably going to sell because I love that new one so much that was sent to me. But So I suppose yeah. we're lucky in a way, but I don't get cameras and lenses and things like that, that uh, the more dear uh, equipment that, you know, I, I certainly never get anything like that given to me. But it's it's hard, and, and what I'm trying to say to people is just be careful about how much you spend, uh, because it may not make your images any better than what your previous camera was. Uh, yeah, it's Think not. about the art side of it, and that's another thing. Well, let's just go back to this anyway, because um, I just wanted to look at some other things. It's saying work on long-term yeah. projects. Uh, you can say, and, and that's a good idea. I, I'm lucky in the fact that I always run projects myself that I run modeling groups that they pay for. Um, and mm -hmm. so that to me is like a long-term project. It, it, it's good because it gives me the ability to try artistic things, but I'm still making money from them. So, that, you know, that's one great thing about doing that uh, and long-term projects a lot. That I mean, Aaron, you do that with your wife all the time. You're always photographing your wife in these lovely locations. So that's a long-term yeah, project for you. Yeah, we do long-term because we actually uh, uh, look where we're going. Like in Italy, we've never been in these certain areas. So we actually research it on the internet months before. We find out the color motif of the area. And then uh, my wife finds uh, clothing that the colors matches that looks good on her. So yeah, it's, it's a project. We don't just go on vacation and we're running around in tennis shoes and sweats and we're just taking photos. That's why they look so good. We've actually researched it. And uh, yeah, so long-term projects is very important. And you could do that in your own, you don't have to go travel either. Pick somewhere in your area, uh, look yeah. it up or drive there and say, ooh, let's, let's do a, uh, a black and white uh, project or something, I don't know, and do something like that. And the other thing too is, and this is a great one, uh, learn from the old masters. One of the best things you can do oh, yeah. as a photography is go to some of the art galleries that are out there and just look at what those masters have done in their paintings because they were masters at looking at light, uh, things like that. And that directly transfers to shooting photography. Mm. So, you know, look at old books, look at photography books and things like Paintings. that. Paintings. Paintings, a brilliant uh, way of looking at how the masters used to use light. Uh, and I often go into the art galleries and look at that. It, it's great. I love doing Let that. Let me... Yeah. Let me add this real quick is paintings are really good to look at because there's no gear involved as far as what we have now. So that that painter was not uh, there's all kind of master painters, of course, but they're not in the gear. You know, I mean, the, you go look at that. and They're all about color, lighting, composition, lines and all that stuff. And just like David said, if you look at that and read about it, because maybe you will look at a photo and you're new and you don't understand what's going on in that, maybe you can read about a certain painting that you like and see what, what's behind the mind of the, the artist. And man, you start making photography like really good and not, um, cause today it's all like, you know, shoot wide open, bokeh background. Ooh, good. And I'm seeing thousands of photos every day with just uh, a model with just blurry backgrounds. And there's not, there's nothing else going on really in the photos, just a model with a blurry background. If you look at paintings, you're just like, Whoa, man, there's all kind of stuff going on here, leading lines and depths and all kind of stuff. So yeah, very good point. See another thing too, that I wanted to sort of talk about and, and, and this is another thing that I, I think people should try and avoid if possible. And it's doing my head in actually how many LumaFusion 4 tutorials are coming on YouTube at the moment. Like they, they must be being, I was asked to do a LumaFusion uh, a while ago to promote it and I, I said no, because I just don't think it's what I would like to promote uh, on my channel. The, the thing is that anything where you're dealing with AI and doing all these other things that these programs are trying to get you to do is your images are all going to look the same. And and this is another thing that I'm mm -hmm. saying about art being an issue that you, guys, if you are trying to learn to be a great photographer and a great artist, the least thing you should really be trying to do is go into something like LumaFusion and have, ev like they're promoting all the AI stuff all this, the time in this, that it's automatic. Is it LumaFusion? That's the video isn't it, thing, isn't it? Uh, what is it? Something the one, else? Uh, what is it online? I keep seeing it all the time. Um, it's yeah, I think the, we're seeing it like wrong, a photo. Yeah, it's like a Photoshop, uh, Photoshop on 
uh, line. Um, but yeah. someone in the live chat may be able to tell me what it is, but I keep seeing it every second. YouTuber seems to be showing it at the moment. Um, but the, the thing is that you want to try and learn all this stuff manual and you want to try and do it artistically and create your own style. Because the, the problem is if you're using these programs that are online that just do everything for you, drop the, the sky, a fake yeah, sky into the background automatically for you, uh, adjust your exposures and everything and all that for you. Um, yeah, there we go. Lumina 4. That, that's perfect, Brett. Thank you Luminar, so much. Luminar, yeah. Yeah, Luminar 4. Um, yeah. The, the thing is that everyone's going to look the same. And what do you want to be, an iPhone shooter where it all looks the same or whatever? Uh, the thing I'm trying to say to you is get your own style, work out what that is, and work hard at it. Don't just expect something like Lumina 4 to come out, and this is what I keep seeing all the time now, and I now avoid any video where I see them promoting it because it's just... But everyone must be being paid, I don't know. But I mean, I haven't got an issue with that, but yeah. I'm sick of seeing it. But... Um, mm -hmm. The thing is, I don't think it's good. I really don't think it's good to be relying on that type of software at this stage. You want a point of difference. That's why I'm saying now I'm trying to use harsher light to give me a point of difference. Uh, I'm using certain lenses and things like that to try and give me a, a point of difference. And I have a certain look that when people look at the video or, or the image, I'm hoping that they can tell that's mine. If you're using something like Luminar, um, and everything can tend to look the same because they're using all this AI to fix everything that's in there. I don't think it's good. Uh, I mean, I'd love to know what you think about this, guys, in the live chat about this, whether you think I'm totally wrong or whatever. I think you're best to still learn Lightroom. You're still best to learn Photoshop. You're still best to learn your individual style because style should mean everything, and that's the thing. The only thing that can separate you from other photographers is your look. That's the only thing that can separate you all from all looking the same. And if you're all gonna look the same, why would anyone wanna hire you? Uh, and let, I mean, I'd love to know about that in the chat, guys, whether you think I'm correct. What do you think, Well, Aaron? Yeah, I feel the same, to, Like just like I said, like uh, when Oreo just put it this, hi, Oreo. Uh, the thing, when, he, when, you know, I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to where YouTube didn't exist yet. When I started photography, it was still in the film. It wasn't even digital yet. The only thing I had was books to to read, libraries to look at, a mag um, bookstores with magazines, stuff like that. And I had to learn by just looking at paintings and, and artworks and stuff like that. But now with YouTube around, uh, it gets so many – like one – one certain photographer or YouTube channel can get so many views and now everybody wants to do that style. And I won't name anybody, but everybody here probably knows those basic big uh, YouTube channels. And I knew that, and when I first started uh, watching YouTube, they're copying it from someone else that I know because it's just all looks the same. It's just blur everything out in the background, put a model in the front. And I'm just getting tired of seeing that. That's why I've started stopping down to F5.6 using harsher light, uh, color, uh, um, uh, color combining things and stuff like that, just trying to get different looks, angles and stuff. And, and we're in a time now that Luminar comes out. Now, I think people aren't really wanting to learn photography. They want to know how to make a pretty picture that gets a lot of views. You know, that's kind of, I don't, because I, I do videos and people don't watch the videos in the past of me like, hey, how can you get good skin tones or whatever? They're looking at like, hey, this lens is better than that one or versus. And they, oh my gosh, I get 50,000 views. And it's just all that. And now with Luminar, it's kind of like, uh, you know, Open your aperture, get a blurry background, open up Luminar and slap some stuff on there and you're done. You get a lot of likes. Uh, I think the the art of photography is kind of – there's still people out there that like it. But the majority of people that I see in YouTube and comments are just – you know, they're all become the singular thing where it just all looks the same. And you go through, uh, go through Instagram, it's like it's the same, it's the same. So I completely agree with you. I think you just have to uh, – Look, go back to the old masters like we talked about and just start studying that if you want to be new, even though it's been done before, it's been done so long ago, you infuse it with your own style of what they did and now you have this new look and just try not to follow the curve in that luminar. Yeah, that's. I think that's kind of a killer and uh, everybody's going to look the same photography. I know, so. I know it is. I mean, Jim says he's bought it and it's saved his editing time. Uh, heaps and, and that's fine, Jim. Look, the like I said, the only thing that worries me is the aspect of what, what changed my whole thinking about all of this was when I went to Yervant and he said, and I always looked at his work and I'm always thinking, how come he gets that certain look that he gets 
when he was doing it. Mm-hmm. And there was issues, things that, like I said, that he was changed the way he shoots, that he's using more of that continuous light. He's using 5.6. And that, that, t- that at that time, I was always shooting everything wide open. Because I went to this mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, that first workshop with him. Uh, and he shocked me when he said he was using 5.6. And, you know, and he sort of said that thing to me about, you know, he wanted the backgrounds to be in focus because the brides were hiring these gorgeous locations and he wanted to show that off. And it changed the way I was thinking too because I'm thinking, well, all I'm doing is I'm looking like everyone else. Every, and that's the problem. You look at most people's work and we all seem to be copying everyone else and we don't tend to now try and get your individual style anymore. And that's what I'm saying. Yep. You may be better off to use old skills first. I know it sounds a little bit archaic, but you might be better off to use old world skills first, work out exactly what your style needs to be, and then Mm -hmm. it may be that you can start to incorporate some AI stuff in that. But the the problem is if we all become too automated, everything is gonna all look the same, and they might as well go and hire the mum down the street I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's what we call the mums with cameras down How the street. How dare but, you? Yeah, but, uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, hey. we might as well just all do that. Well, put it this way. Let everybody do their Luminar stuff and, and wide open everything, and then those few that don't want to go that way are the ones who have the different look, right? So. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Go for uh, it. And the last thing was pick a lane. It said uh, it's talking about um, if you wish to improve as a photographer, it may be way more productive if you specialize and focus your effort on mastering a specific field of photography. And this is another thing, too, yeah. but I'm not sure now whether you can be a, a specialized photographer. And I'd love to know what you think about this, Aaron. But uh, okay. When I've started, like I do really, I'm specialized really in the fact that I only photograph models and I'll only photograph um, uh, weddings. I, I occasionally, like I've just had Christmas specials done, which I do, and I do dance work. So I'm sort of more specialized in that line. I don't photograph cool. babies uh, and mm-hmm. I don't really do family portraits and stuff like that. But I don't know about the US. Is it possible to specialize anymore or do you have to be like a jack of all trades? And I'd love to know your opinion about that, Aaron, and and other people in the chat. Well, I think uh, jack of all trades is a good thing because um, that opened up me doing a lot of uh, video work for – because I learned how to do motion graphics, special effects, color grading, uh, and then of course the whole video aspect things and all that. So that, and then different programs that re- revolve around now, 3D Max and um, the other 3D programs to do 3D modeling and all that. Because I learned and got very diverse, uh, more jobs are open to me. So when it comes to photography, I think it's best to know a lot of different stuff unless you just really are really love a certain type of photography like landscapes and you don't like the other stuff, then really learn it. But that's just, you know, as far as a, a craft and, and uh, an interest is good. But to try to make money or a career, I think you should be more diverse. Now, I had never thought I would be a jewelry photographer, but I that's predominantly what I do now. I, you know, so because I, I dabbled into uh, macro photography as far as products, uh, product photography, I've got quite a bit of jobs doing that and I predominantly do that now. So I think you should be a little diverse, um, but it's, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, I just want to do magazine shoots all the time, which I love to do and I get hired for not nearly enough, uh, maybe one a year or so, or, or more than that, maybe little ads or something. I would rather do that, but face it, I'm not going to get all those all the time. So I think you should be diverse if you want to have a camera in your hand and do get paid to do it. Otherwise, you're going to have to do a day job and just use it uh, as a hobby, I guess. So that's kind of my take on it. I think you should learn a little more. Um, that other guy, I forget his name, uh, was talking about that too. Like there's so much paid photography out there, but people just want to shoot the pretty model, you know? So yeah. Uh, I think you should be diverse if you want to do a job with holding a camera all day, which I like to do, so I'm more diverse. Yeah, it's interesting. Ario said, obviously in Italy, here you obviously have to be a jack of all trades if you want to survive as a professional photographer, unless you are one of those 10 to 20 top photographers uh, in the country. I suppose the only downside of doing this jack of all trades is the fact that do you ever become a master at one area? And this is the thing that... Uh, I'm, I'm sort of trying to say there that, but it might not be possible anymore financially to, to do that. But, you know, like if you do totally specialize on weddings and that's all you do, I'm probably a believer that you will give a better job than if you specialized in say doing baby portraits, weddings, 
uh, events and everything else because you would have more of an idea about being a specialist in that area. It's like if you're in the medical field, you always want to go and get a specialist yeah. for that operation that you go and get because they're masters at that uh, surgery or whatever they're going to do. But we may not be able to be like that anymore. You know, we yeah, might not be able to have hard. that. Yeah. You, you, yeah, I mean, like if, like I said, if you want to do landscapes and you know that there's, uh, you know, like, hey, there's this one corporation in my town who's looking for a landscape photographer. Yeah, but it's just so rare. And I forget who said it or somewhere, somewhere, someone somewhere said it. I don't know where I read. I'm reading so many things as we're doing the show. But it's a very, maybe it was Oreo. It's a very small percentage of people that actually uh, are uh, like photographers for Vogue. I'm I actually uh, an online friend of my me, uh, an online friend of mine who we dabble back and forth with uh, text messages. He does photography for Vogue in Paris. He's he's Canadian, and you know what? I mean, how would I ever get a job like that? I would love to get a job like that, but it's mm. just so small. So I say, be diverse. Learn a bunch of different genres if you want to make money holding a camera in your hand all day. If you just want to target one thing, chances are you might not be able to do it, but it, you might have to have a day job at the same time. So yeah. that's my yeah. take. Now, Jim said Aaron and David using Luminar has nothing to do with the look the artist produced, nothing whatsoever. I suppose it may be a problem, Aaron, with how, uh, or Jim, how it's being marketed on YouTube because on yeah, YouTube, every way. video that I see about it is all that you can just take it in, press one thing, and then the image comes out. You know, and that's the problem of maybe what people are advertising that program. If it's young people just seeing it, that they can just bring it in and click and it's all done for them, there's no skill uh, from their side. And that's why I'm saying you're better off to learn the basics before you move. I mean, I was an apprentice originally when I started my job. And, and you know, I and I think photography should be taken the same way because I was uh, when I first was an apprentice in the advertising industry, I had to do the real basics before I was even allowed to go yeah. anywhere near a camera or do anything else. I had to learn all these skills before that I even started that. And I think the problem is people are rushing it and they're using AI as the excuse to do it. But you should learn the basics first. Learn how that you can sort of manipulate and get your own style. Then you could move out into more of the AI type stuff. But I, I do think it's a better idea to learn those basics that everyone now is in such a rush that they're always trying to sort of, uh, you know, to get the stuff out as quickly as possible. And I think the art suffers a little bit. But Jim, I mean, you I, may think totally different and that's fine because we all, all think different things. No, I just think like if you want to be a photographer, like w what is the definition of a photographer? I have no idea. You look it up, it'd probably be something different than what I would think. But if you want to know the art of like photography, I mean, there are uh, web pages out there that really get into the art of photography, like really like they're not about the um, AI or um, editing part of it. It's just like, how do I capture a really cool image and stuff? And I think there's like, the, there's a lot of people who, you know, there's those two sides, you know, shoot for post-processing or shoot in camera. I think shooting in camera is more, hey, I gotta get this right. And you're thinking a little more about what you're doing. And I think it's getting more like shoot for post where, the dynamic range is so great, you know, open your aperture, blur the background, shoot the shot, and then it's, you got 60 megapixels, you can crop and do everything in post and slap a sky in there. If that's the way photography is and that's what you enjoy, then I'm not saying not to do it. That's great. But if you're getting into photography and not computer manipulation, uh, then it's, I think that's the blurring line. I, I say do whatever you want. I kind of do both. Uh, depends on the shot, but... Yeah. Oh, the panda gave a ten dollar donation as well. Thank you so much, panda. Just saying hello cool, to both panda, you, thanks. both Aaron and David. So thanks so much, mate. Thanks, panda. I uh, hope we appreciate. Uh, hope you're well up there. Jim said, um, "All Lumina does for me is expedite workflow, as I previously uh, mentioned. No problem at all, Jim." Yeah. Um, so it. also, the last thing I wanted to mention on this article, though, is uh, down here because. There's a couple of things I'll just go through quickly, but don't wait for the train for opportunities. In other words, you have to go and look for the opportunities that are out there. And the last thing is saying, um, always try and look for visually stimulating things. And I think they're saying, cool story. Always try and make a story with the image. The story is more Stories. important. Yeah, it's very important. Uh, and what I wanted to add to this is um, training. Like whatever you do, if you are going to learn from other people, 
Uh, just make sure that they do know what they're talking about. Now, the, the problem is YouTube oh, is rife with this. That yeah, they don't get me yeah, started you're on You're getting that one. photographers that aren't really photographers that can't get work out there, and all they'll end up doing is going out and running workshops. So just be careful that you do look at someone that is experienced. Don't just look for a personality. Look for someone that does have a portfolio to back it up. Now, the, the way to check that is whoever is advertising the workshop, go out and check their portfolio. Make sure they are who they say they are and they do have a really great portfolio to back them up. Uh, so that's an important thing as well. You know, like I think uh, training is fantastic. If you can get good workshops, and I mean really good workshops with, with good instructors, uh, that will really help your photography uh, leap and bounds. Well, you know, when I was at Photo Plus, I was seeing, um, don't remember his name, never heard of him before, but I've seen him. I, you know, he was he was at the the the, the Panasonic Lumix booth doing a uh, presentation or whatever about lighting and stuff. And a lot of times, you know, the more you learn, the more a lot of times the basics, like, well, I already know that. But I was listening to him, and it's like, you know, this is like, this is like the guy, the real deal. This is like a guy who's actually showing techniques, didn't even talk about the cameras at all, just showing you good techniques. And so I looked him up on YouTube and he has really good technical uh, videos on photography. He, he doesn't have a whole bunch of views and all that. And then you see another channel that they shoot just, I mean, it's just a can I've said this so many times on the show. It's just a camera over there showing them shoot wide open and that's all they do. Uh, and like David said, if you want to if you want to follow somebody or listen to what they say, first of all, l look up their portfolio. Yep. Or if you're on YouTube and you and they show that photo that comes up after they snap a shot, if that's what you like, like ooh, I like his work, then yeah, continue listening to him. So he so you see what he does to get the what he's doing. But more importantly, you should learn like the guy at Photo Plus. Uh, I think he's a Panasonic luminary or, or visionary. Or I don't know what you call those uh, guys that work for the Panasonic or Canon and all those things. But listen to those guys on the techniques and, and just come up with your own technique. Don't just say, oh, I like that guy's photo. What's he doing? I want to buy the same camera, the same lens, same settings and get out there and learn and do your own thing and learn from people who, like Dave, uh, David just said, they have a portfolio that actually knows photography. I'm done. All right, so let's go into the next one anyway, because I wanted to go through this one pretty quickly. I thought this was funny, and I wanted particularly to Ooh, talk splashy. to the U.S. photographers. Uh, have you got the timer there, Aaron? It's the photographer uh, wins um, 345K settlement. Panda, stop it. He's giving us another $5. <laughs> Thanks, Panda. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate you, man. Um, thanks, Panda, mate. Really, he said uh, five dollars extra for the amazing work you and Aaron do. Uh, this is thanks, interesting buddy. because in America, apparently, this guy won the settlement of three hundred and forty-five k for unlawful arrest while taking pictures. Now, the interesting thing is, it was Dallas, I think, that they did this. Um, they had to settle the laundry because apparently what they're saying was he was Ill illegally arrested for taking photos of someone being treated. For an overdose and i thought wow that's that's really yeah, yeah. interesting so one of the rules like this is what i'm saying it, one thing as a photographer you do have to be very very careful that you check the local rules um for what is available or what you're allowed to do in that country like here in australia yeah. for instance you can shoot in the streets uh, legally i mean they can't stop you from shooting uh, on a side street or whatever of shooting anything like yeah place. i mean i suppose if you're trying to shoot children i mean you you may get in trouble but uh if you're just shooting anyone yeah. around as long as you're not doing that for money it's in a public place you can just shoot i, I would think america is the same but i know in america you often have to get a lot of um uh you have to pay for things like if Permits. you're shooting in in uh, la and things like that don't you a second you look like you're professional you've got to go out and get permits um, but this is a really interesting scenario. I was going to say 345000 for shooting this uh, paramedic helping this uh, drug uh, overdose, I think it was. Um, but what have you found in Puerto Rico, Aaron? Are there restrictions that you have to do there that you've got to worry about? No, nah, there's... No, here you do you can do anything pretty much. It's pretty uh, pretty lenient here. In the States, it's the same. It's the same same uh, laws, basically. And it's, um, those permits are usually when you, when you're setting up a flash tripod, stuff like that. If you're just holding in the camera, uh, you can pretty much shoot anywhere. Um, when I am now, when you're in Vegas and you're at the WPPI, um, I think it's at the Javits center. I, I think that's where it's usually at, at the Javits center. I was there one year. Uh, we were doing another, uh, 
a wedding a bridal show thing and my wife was doing her thing i said i'm going to go out and take some photos and when you're in places like that oh my gosh uh put your camera away because you will be hassled like crazy i mean they wanted to take my camera because i i was outside like the sidewalk of the javits center shooting a, a, a building two buildings that were being constructed not even pointing the camera at the javits center and golf carts just came up swarmed me i'm like whoa what the heck you know it's like it was just ridiculous. They wanted to see the the photos on my camera, and I completely said, "No, you ain't checking nothing out because I I'm not even on your property. Get out of here, right?" So they waited till I came in, and then they started hassling me again. So although you're allowed to, and I had no tripods, I had a, a it was a Panasonic GX85, which is a small point and shoot looking type of thing, and I mean, it's just ridiculous. So during in areas of public big public things like the javits center or airports or uh, stuff like that maybe casinos they're going to be very picky with you especially if you're on the property because it's private property but when you're in a public place they they still hound you i mean it's just ridiculous like this this guy got hounded for in a public place shooting it cops get all weird and it's against the law for a cop to do that that's why this guy won uh, the settlement or whatever you call it, because he wasn't doing anything illegal. The illegal activity was on the part of the police officer or paramedic or whoever this was who told him to put the camera away and do all that stuff and arrested him and everything. So that's ridiculous. But, you know, you can hold your own and say, I know the law or you can end up in jail anyways. And six months later, maybe win or just be like, dude, OK, I put it away. So, it's, yeah, it's kind of a ridiculous thing that they put you through. But yeah, if we go into the Javits Center next uh, in February, just be mindful of that, even if it's a photography show. So it's kind of weird. Mm. And, I mean, I noticed yeah. Gerald says, yes, you can photograph everything, including police uh, doing their work. <laughs> you can. Yeah, but but... says, hell, LA might even give you a ticket for even looking like you're going to take a photo. <laughs> That's the thing. It's against the law, you know. Uh... It's against the law for them to do that to you, but they do it anyway. Langston says. And it's just like. Oh, sorry, Aaron, you can go. No, nah, it's just ridiculous. The law, the the law is you're allowed to shoot in a public place, but the cops don't follow the law. Sometimes I'm not saying all cops. If you're a cop, I mean I'm not yeah. attacking cops, but cops do. I see it all over YouTube, and I've been hassled myself. So it's it's okay to do it, but some cops don't like it, and they can arrest you, like this case right here. So what was your well, Langston say? said here? As long as the light stands, don't hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so if the lights yeah, hit the ground, the you're, you're in it's trouble. True. I love it. That's that's funny. Um, but they'll come after yeah. you. Whatever, Gerald says so. you can sell it. It's a news photo, but not as an advertisement. Okay, because I asked him if you could sell the photo if you did take one of police. Uh, he said as a news photo, yes, but not as an advertisement. Okay, thanks, Gerald. Um, that's why Callie has some of the most amazing natty light photographers. Natural light, yeah, because you won't get caught. That's the funny thing about it. All right, let's go on to this next one. I just wanted to talk about this polar pro filter because this is interesting if you're a landscape photographer. Um, hey, real quick, someone yep. was saying that uh, the Javits Center is in New York. Uh, I don't know if I said Vegas. Uh, I may be confused on that, but Javits Center is in New York. And the bottom line is if you're in any major building like that, you just got to be careful. So when you are coming out in February, just be mindful. Uh, you might be hassled if you're in a big uh, arena like that. Okay, okay go ahead. Um, yeah, so this new um, system from um, Where we Polar at? Pro. Oh, now, yeah. I've got one that's – I can't remember the manufacturer. Yeah. sent me one Where that's something system? similar. It's a cheaper version of this, though, way cheaper version that I'm going to review uh, coming up soon because I thought it, it's a problem if you're dealing with the lenses that have the bulbous front uh, it becomes an issue because you can't fit uh, oh, yeah. NDs over them so this is a solution for that and this comes out with a plate the one I've got is similar in the fact that it has a plate and it has adapters that fit different size lenses so I'll review that reasonably soon but it's it's not something that I personally will buy but they asked me if I was interested in them reviewing I thought why not because someone may be interested uh, that have these lenses that have the bulbous front on them. Um, but there is one advantage of using these uh, filters that can slide in. If you're doing landscape and you want to vary the exposure between the sky and the landscape, you can have variable ones the yeah, that have the gradient that stops mm -hmm. at a certain line and then you can match exactly where the horizon line is. So you could vary your exposure for the sky and also for um, the uh, you know your sort of scene that you're doing. Now, yes, you can do this in Lightroom and everything as well. But it is like anything, you will always get a better result if you can get it as close as possible in the camera. And then you can uh, 
edit that later on. Like it's very hard to do long exposure. You can't really do that successfully in software as you can if you're doing it uh, with filters and stuff like that, that that are on there. But so this is an interesting one that I've just seen that's, I think, I'm not even sure if it's available yet. Someone just said, uh, is this like five ninety nine? I don't know if it'll mention the price. I'll have a look when we go down. Yeah, it's, it says the price at oh, the bottom. Oh, okay, yeah. So it is expensive. Two fifty. Uh, Two fifty. Is it's it? It's Two fifty just for the 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 the, the bracket and seven hundred for that and a couple filters. Boy, it's expensive. Yeah. yeah, certainly wouldn't be buying this one. Polarizer, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it's kind of expensive there. So you get an ND sixty four, an ND four, and a polarizer all together for seven hundred bucks. Ooh, yeah, it's expensive. I mean, the the one I've got, I think it's from KNF Concept. I think is a cheaper version of this. That for me probably would be all I'd ever need. There's no way I'm going to go out and yeah. pay sort of this money for what I do. But I suppose if you're a serious landscape photographer, uh, or that's your job doing this sort of thing, that probably isn't a lot of money if you're dealing with you know, spending um, that sort of money. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about, about that. You know, my take on yep. it is I just don't like carrying a lot of stuff. Yep. I mean, you know, I, I, we talked about technique. Yeah, to be technique, to get it right, you would want to use these, to, you know, like that. But it's such an easy task to do it in post, as we just talked about, that, uh, I mean, a gradient straight down, I, I just think it's so easy. If I... You know, I just don't like carrying gear and to pay that much. Now, I would like if there's any serious uh, landscape photographers, is this something that's like a must have? You must use filters or do you just do it in post? I would like because I'm not a landscape photographer because of that. I would just do it in post. But maybe there's a huge difference. So leave it in the comments if yeah, you're I'd watching this know. later uh, and not live. Yeah, I'd like to know. You know, I'd like to know. Um, okay. Next. Victor said only 36 thumbs up. Yeah, love it if you could give us some thumbs up, guys. It does support yeah, the channel. Up us. Um, what else okay. have we got? Oh, now the last couple of stories are just a couple of quick news stories that I wanted to discuss. Yeah, quick. Um, Aaron, I think there was one you will might talk about that next week. That one you were going to share. Um, sure. Oh no, there is. We can talk about that quickly at the end. Uh, the Olympus have backtracked. It's interesting because Olympus have backtracked, and they're actually saying that they're now the business may be for sale, Aaron. Um, so yeah, I know. This, I mean, this won't be in the list. I just found this just before we came on live. But oh. uh, so they were talking originally saying we heard rumors a week or so ago that Olympus are in real strife and they, they may go basically broke. Uh, and then the CEO or something came out and said, no, that's all fake. Well, now he's come up and said that it may be up for sale. Uh, this is the statement down here that's the important one. He said he also backtracked on some of his comments in the past that the camera business was not for sale, saying that that may not be the mm -hmm. case anymore. Now, he's talking about big staff cuts, uh, things like that. Uh, the article mostly relates that we are... We already know from previous reports that the company is planning to focus on the medical business, but it did not contain one dynamite piece of new information apart from that, what I just said, uh, that there was job cuts and also saying that it may not be the case that it's not for sale hmm. uh, anymore. So I hope, I hope Olympus survives, but... Uh, it's not. Oh, me too. Yeah. They make amazing yeah. lenses, cameras, it's, and it's stuff. It's not yeah. looking good, though, if you look at that. What's going on there? And the last thing yeah. was Aaron shared this. Now, this this is interesting because this. Um, just let me say no thanks. This uh, article is talking about a power cage L bracket for filmmakers. This is a bit different to the one I've got. I'll just show you quickly the one that I did uh, in a review, which was this one. And it's funny, Aaron, because it's very similar to what uh, you were showing here. So this is a one from Sumwell. Now, I believe it's the, exactly the same as the Kame TV. I looked the other day, and they're almost identical, actually. Uh, it's a typical Chinese thing where they all copy one another. Um, but this has about four and a half of the Sony Z batteries of power inside it, and it will run. It actually comes with a Sony Z battery attachment. When you purchase these, you can buy the battery attachment that you want, whether it's, I think, a Canon or, or the Panasonic. Yeah, uh, fantastic, though, if you want to shoot all day. I love this, and I was using it with things like lighting. Check the review down below, anyway, because I have done a full review on this. Uh, feels great. Yeah, check it out, Aaron. It's great. I love this little unit. It's about 200 bucks, I think, um, or a little bit over 200 Um but this one Aaron was sharing uh, today, so it's very similar um, in the things that it does. It just looks like it's a little bit of a, di a different design uh, that you can power USB and all different things as well. You're, yeah, you can power laptops, yeah. recharge. Yeah. So it's a basically a do everything bo uh, 
power brick that can conveniently and, and, and nicely go onto a grip, which is actually kind of cool. So you don't have to just use it for your your camera stuff. You can act, uh, take it off and use it for everything else yeah. too. So it's kind of a neat little product yeah, there. Yeah, that's why. And you're going to need it for the X-T3 if you're doing video because that battery dies yeah, real exactly. quick. exactly. That's why I love that one that I've got. Like I do like uh, putting that on. I don't have to worry about changing the battery for the whole day. So that's one yeah. great thing. And I can run lights from it monitors and everything and it lasts for hours so it's fantastic so this is a similar uh, system that's uh, available there uh, as well um so let's go to are we going to show our photo oh yeah or yes are we just gonna no, we will save yeah it. let's just show it i mean we'll show them quickly i'll bring mine up if you like i'm not sure whether i've shown this before but i thought i'd show it again just in case because i can never remember what i've shown i just wanted to show kiara because i haven't showed her for a while um so if you guys are new to the show, it's called Behind the Photo. And what we do is, if we have time, we always show a photo of ours each, and we describe a behind the photo, like basically our mind or how we got the shot. So that's what we're going to do So right this now. was another one that I did of uh, Kiara in Melbourne, actually. I spoke to Kiara the other day. I'm going to hopefully try and do something again. We've just got to work out some time. She's working full time now, so... People often ask where she gone and stuff, and <laughs> the issue is at the time she was still at school. She was finishing her VCE, which is year 12, and uh, now she's working full time. So it's hard now uh, to get together because I used to do the shoots during the week. She had a day off a week. Uh, this image here was with Kiara in Melbourne. Again, this is balancing ambient light uh, with, because uh, underneath this, um, this is the GPO in Melbourne. Underneath the GPO in Melbourne is lovely yellow sort of warm lighting. This is the perfect scenario where I can use continuous lighting like I said and balance the continuous light with the ambient light. So all I did yeah. was I balanced, I did the ambient exposure first and then, because I wanted to keep that lovely arch and the lovely warm colors that were actually through there. Uh, and then I had a two foot octa with my uh, Profoto B10 in it using continuous light. Kerry was just off the camera to the right-hand side. You can see how the light's coming across there. Uh, lovely and soft uh, in this case. Beautiful. Um, but, you know, I love this. And I just really wanted her to extend her legs and arms and everything. I love whenever they're uh, sort of relaxing their fingers and their toes and legs uh, and adding shape from the body by lifting the arms away from the body. They're the important things that you can look at here. You'll notice too that I've asked her to tilt her head a fraction as well to even give a, a bit of interest in that regard rather than looking just at the side. Her shoulder is slightly pointed back uh, from so their shoulders aren't directly straight on. They are on the side and that gives that lovely shape on a female. Uh, just thought mm -hmm. I'd share that, Sit Aaron. And did you mention sitting on the edge of the chair? Yes, uh, it's important for a female particularly to sit right up, well, anyone really. To, uh, if they are wearing dresses though, it's really important that they sit right on the edge of the chair here because if you don't, even though Kiara has uh, a lovely slim body, uh, if she sat further back, there would be a lump where the leg meets the uh, sort of where the chair finishes and, and it's very unflattering. Yeah. So you've got to try, if you can, to sit the girls, particularly if they're wearing dresses, right on the edge of the seat as much as possible, really, because then you won't get that look that where the leg sort of butts in exactly. and, it, and it's very it's not nice to look at. So that, that's why it's so important uh, to do that. And that's it, yeah. I think it's also easier for them to get a better posture, too. Yeah. Uh, it's a little more natural to get more posture up than if you're sitting kind of far back or something. Okay, uh, let's so go. That's mine. Beautiful so photo, wanna... by the way. I, I think you did show that. I may actually, have. I can't remember. I just seen it on Instagram. Yeah. But... So do you want to show yours? Let's see. Yeah, let's go desktop. This is a photo we just did um, on our trip. Uh, I, my wife would have to chime in in the chat to tell us the name of this uh, hotel. Let the me switch to uh, there, Aaron, because the I'll bring you up. What's the name of this, hun? Uh, text it to me. The Grand, I can't even pronounce the words, but it's in Italy. <laughs> it's over, it, she's gonna text me right now probably. But let me talk about the photo now. We plan this, like we said, we always plan our stuff. If we can't, if I can't drive there and look at it in person, we go on the internet and we look at photos or, or whatever of the location. So we saw this, my wife saw this and like, oh my gosh, look, we gotta do a photo shoot here. So. Um, we looked at it, and once we see the colors of the area, my wife finds clothing that matches the, the colors of the area. That's my style. That's our style. So that's what we did here. And the funny thing about this room that I didn't realize until I got there is, okay, okay I can use my cursor. I think you guys can see that. Yeah. Um, the very interesting thing is once I got here, if you notice, every chair has a lamp behind it. 
And it's a, I mean, this room had all these chairs in this weird configuration, but every, looks, this chair over here, there's a lamp behind it. Uh, every chair has a lamp behind it. It was really funny. And like the chair she's sitting in was facing this way with a lamp behind it. Now, this is all done with, um, uh, practical lighting, which means it's the lighting that was there. You could say natural light, but it's not natural because it's not coming from the sun or something. It's practical lighting. It's the lighting that was already there. And the chair she's sitting in was facing the other way with the lamp behind it. So no matter what angle I got and what chair we sat in, she was always backlit. And because we're doing natural, uh, uh, practical lighting, she's backlit. So that means her face is going to be dark. It's going to be bright and behind her. We're not using uh, flash. So it's good. It's like, oh, wait, this isn't working. So basically... Uh, I took this chair and I completely turned it around facing me. I was in the, I, I don't know if you guys can see Aaron, me. I can't see you, myself. But Just out of that though, did you expose, because I noticed what makes the shot for me too is the how you've kept the highlights in those lights. They're not blown. Is that what you were aiming yeah, for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And this is how I did it was once I got the chair in an angle of the composition that I like, that was important for me. Like, this is the composition I want. What can we do? Well, let's just turn the chair around. I don't know if that's 360 degrees or, or, or less. I don't know. But turn it toward the camera, which would make that lamp be right off to her left, camera right. And by her looking at the lamp, of course, the shadows are falling uh, nicely on her face. And because there's lampshades, it's soft and all that stuff. And yeah. That's what I did was I balanced for the light because I didn't want to blow out the lights and the ambient and the walls would be blown out and I didn't want that. I wanted it to be all, you know, balanced. And but um, I wanted to see her shoes and everything. So as I pushed the chair back, I realized that the light fall off is really fast. And what would happen was the light would just come across her um, upper chest here and her face would be in the dark. So I had no other choice but to pull her closer to this chair so it doesn't really make sense but when you make a photo you can do things and who cares right yeah. so by putting her as close as you could see that the table's touching the chair that was close enough to where the light was just falling off on her face giving her soft light and i did have to uh do a what do you call it like a little bit of a mask on her face to increase the highlights of her face just a little bit just because the fall off was brighter here on the chair than on her face naturally so i just had to boost that i boost the saturation just a tad and that's basically it a very easy edit um and i forget what you call that when you put an oval on someone's face and brighten it up a yeah, spot the veneer, uh, isn't it? You're talking correction about or whatever yeah. yeah and i brightened it up her face just a little bit and that was the shot so even though we planned this, I didn't plan that there was a lamp behind her head every, no matter where she sat, and I wanted the composition. So that's how I got the shot. Uh, Rick said, is your wife uh, oh. Rick said, is your wife a photographer, Aaron? No, she's not a photographer. She's uh, solely my model. Um, she has Don't done to switch back um, to photos. Her. Oh, yeah. She has done photos for, uh, of me uh, in certain... Uh, am I back? No. no. no uh, she are. has done photos of me before, but I would kind of set it up. And but she has a really good eye for composition. So, but she's not a photographer. Uh, she could be if she learned. Yeah. Cool. Anyways, that's it. Let's David. have some quick Q and A. Just see if there's anything that interests you, Aaron. That you know we, we'd like to talk. Oh, about. by the way, that was at Lake Como in Italy, and it was called the Gran Tramezzo Hotel. Probably butchered it, but that was where that was located. Beautiful place. I'm just trying to see down here um, if there's anything that we're there. I mean, most people were answering each other's questions as there was going on. Jim's obviously very happy with uh, Lumina because he's raving about it, so he's very happy with <laughs> it. Um, no, it's not a bad program by no. any means, and there's all kinds of stuff you can do in it, but they're just saying that, hey, buy our program and you can replace stuff. 0007 uh, said, it. but privacy rights get stricter if you're using it commercially, yeah, and that's one thing you do have to be careful of. There's a difference between yeah, shooting and street photography mm -hmm. than if you're making money That's off what it. we're talking yeah, about. You've got to be very careful. The second you're doing that, you need model releases of the people that you're shooting. Releases, yeah. Yeah, uh, and yeah when we did documentaries uh, here in Puerto Rico, when I was the videographer, uh, every time we went out and we filmed, I had to make sure I was kind of the director videographer at the same time. I had to make sure nobody was in it. And anybody that was in it, we had to go, hey, you know what? Uh, we're going to put this on video. Do you want to sign it? If they said no, we had to reshoot it. If they said yes, they signed it and we're good. Uh, Gerald said to Jim, a recent federal court ruling say it's okay anywhere, anywhere in the USA now to photograph police. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. That even came out, you know. But still, be mindful. If a cop doesn't want it, 
they can arrest you for anything. Yeah. I, I mean, that's just the way it is. So if you don't want trouble, just think about what you're doing. If you don't mind sticking up for your rights and just go for it, go for it. But just be mindful that there are still some police officers. You, you think they would know the law, but some they just don't. They just get mad and they, they say, oh, he's a, a resisted arrest or uh, yeah, that's the what was that one unlawfully there. Yeah. And so it's um, that's the thing. What else? We said that uh, Langston said, hell, here they're likely to be in a video or a photo have not been turned down once. Oh, there was another one I was going to read, actually. It wasn't that one. Um, uh, Gerald said, police don't follow the laws, but photographers have been winning these cases. Yeah, perhaps they'll start backing you, off Jim. if that's the case. Um, what else have we got? Rick said, uh, oh, no, he's talking to someone else there in that one. Oreo said, never had problems shooting in the streets except once when the cops thought I was photographing them. I showed them the pics and everyone yeah. then was okay. Uh, it's, so, it's ridiculous, really. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not rude. If, if a cop doesn't want me to photograph him, I just won't. If anybody says, hey, can you not photograph me? I mean, I'm going to not photograph him. Yep. Um, that's kind of a rule of thumb I go Brett by. Brett said, just remember that using ND filters can't be undone in post-editing, but for landscapes, it's oh, the best true. way, getting it right in camera. Yep. Yeah. And you've got to understand, Thanks. too, that some cheaper ones, if you're using cheaper ones, can put color casts into the images as well that you have to uh, be mindful of. Uh, oh yeah, well. that's and you can have focusing issues. I wouldn't even use one for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, focusing issues. Uh, definitely. If you're using a DSLR or how's it? Yeah, if you're using a DSLR, uh, it can be so dark uh, ND filters that you can't even see what you're focusing. So you have to do different techniques with mirrorless. You can like turn live view yeah. off so it brightens up the screen. Uh, what else? <laughs> like Hero said, Sony Olympus. Uh, he's saying that Sony oh, are yeah, going to buy Sony are going to buy Olympus. I love it. Um, Maybe we knew the bad guys would collect the baseball cards. They are. They're talking to each other. I'm um, just trying to see if there's anything else down there. Didn't Sony buy uh, Sony bought someone else too? Didn't they? Yeah, Min Minolta, Minolta, right? Yeah, that's where they got their original camera yeah. business from. Was Minolta? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And people are just commenting on Epic saying they were nice, which was nice. Nice. Uh, Jim's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I read it. Uh, what else? Nikon is dead. It's bad. It's got dense. I was wondering how nice you pictures, got her face. Thanks. I thought maybe uh, the used to flash. I think he was talking about um, you uh, photographing your wife there. No, just using the practical light and then boosting it a little bit in uh, post. Uh, Photomix says, I'm working on my Santa Monica Beach shoot video right now. Got lucky, no tickets, no warnings or anything. That's fantastic, uh, Photomix. Yeah, that's um, good. Hopefully we can have a shoot together when we all come over. I'm looking forward to meeting you, uh, Ike. Um, uh, Fruple said, I was uh, told by a cop in Puerto Rico to do anything. <laughs> I would do it. Uh, if, I were, oh, if he was told by a cop in Puerto Rico to do anything, he would do it. I love it. Yeah, he might, might end up in jail. They don't, <laughs> well, they don't hassle. They, this is like the least place that they've kind of had. They don't hassle you at all. I mean, never had an issue. I would. Uh, Rick said, how would it work if Sony was to buy Olympus? I wouldn't think Sony would buy Olympus. I don't think they'd have any interest in them. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the problem with Olympus is they've stuck. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but the, the problem with Olympus is they've stuck with Micro Four Thirds, uh, whereas Panasonic have gone. Oh, that's true. They've gone full frame now. So not only have they got the Micro Four Thirds, but they've now gone full frame. So they've... Uh, at least expanded their marketplace. Uh, Fuji have got APS-C and also uh, medium format. So they've got two areas as well. The problem with Olympus is they're stuck with um, Micro Four yeah, Thirds. Yeah, what would Sony, yeah, maybe Sony wouldn't buy them because that would be like, are they going to make Micro Four Thirds cameras all yeah, of well, a sudden? That's, yeah, that's it. That's what kinda... would they get out of it? I don't really yeah. know. So, yeah. That's why Olympus might be in trouble for those purposes too, you know? Um, I mean, I'd love Sony to buy it and then use their bodies and put a, a APS-C uh, sensor in there. Wow, what that would make an yeah, fantastic. Yeah, the bodies are amazing. Um, APS-C camera, those bodies and their lenses are yeah, beautiful. They're so good. Fatimex says, "Oh, I got you, David Ace. That we're going to be lit in Vegas." <laughs> Oh, I love it. Well, yeah. that's about it, guys. So we we've finished uh, for the day. Now next week we'll be on Aaron's channel. Um, so please, like yes. I said, we're going to do that at seven p.m. So we'll be an hour earlier. Uh, which will be back at 8 p.m. Um, Aaron's time. 
It'll be 11 p.m. Australian time next week, uh, so we'll do it an hour earlier uh, next week. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. We'd love it if you could give us a thumbs up because it does make a difference with the channels. Like I said, we're both unsupported. Uh, so that would be fantastic yep. if you could uh, share it because it does get it out there. Uh, apart from that, I'll be on Friday Thanks, for the guys. live Sony show on Friday. Uh, what have you got coming up? Anything, Aaron, or still getting back I off the holidays? no idea. Yeah, I'm still, I've still got back from the holidays. i got to think about what, what I'm going to be doing Oh, now, just before we do finish, too, there might be something that could interest Aaron, uh, that the Panasonic have just announced their firmware updates. Um, yeah, I had that in the list yeah. here, and I didn't think we'd have because time to Because did you want to mention, it. Aaron, Panas that you are going to get the uh, G9? Yeah, actually, I'm filming right... Yeah, I got the Panasonic G9 right now, and I'm filming on it. The really cool thing about it is it's got the flippy screen on it. So I'm actually... Uh, when I had the Sony up there, it's so squished back I couldn't see anything because it's literally against the wall to, to fit me in here. And with the Panasonic G9, I could flip the screen all the way forward and focus on myself. I could see myself. And then I've got the full HDMI uh, thing in there, which is really cool. And with the new update, it's got um, animal eye odd focus, which I never used on the Sonys. But it does have 10-bit 422 uh, 4K video. So that's kind of really cool. And Does it shoot uh, 6K? I'm gonna be, does it shoot... Um... 4K60? It does six. It say does that again. Does it do 4K60? Yeah, 4K60. Wow. Yeah, it's always had 4K60P, uh, but it doesn't do four uh, 10 bit 422 and 4K60P, yeah. only 30P and 24P, which is good, I guess. You know what I mean? Uh, now, I saw that fine. camera uh, was advertised this morning somewhere for under $1,000. That is amazing because if mm. you think about yeah. you now with that firmware up, Great. That camera, the G9, has yes. basically I'm become so a GH5. It's basically a GH5. Um, yeah, and you, and there's us. Um, you have the uh, the before you couldn't. I can't remember the terminology, but the the those flatter picture profiles. You they didn't have it in the G9 because I had this camera a year now, ago. Is that the paid update for that, that, or do you get that in a? No, no, okay. they have uh, no, they have the the flat styles, but you can also do the paid upgrade to get the other. I, I, I forget all the terminologies. So they have all that. So it literally is an amazing photographical camera that now can support 4K 60p like always, but now 4K 24p or 30p and 10 bit 422. So now green screening. I'm going to do some tests with yeah. green screening to see if it matters if you shoot with the 100 and it still has 120 150 megabits. So it still has that, but it has the bigger, what do you call that, color grommet? I have to color redo gamut, yeah. my terminology yeah. video. Yeah, so it has all that. So we're going to do some green screen tests to see if you could tell from non-10-bit four, uh, 422 or that. So, yeah, so stay tuned to that. Yeah, I'll fantastic. do a video on that. So that's, that's there as well. Yeah. We may even talk about that a bit more next week. Yeah, we should next week. All right, guys. Well, apart from that, uh, have a great couple of days. I'll see you on Friday my time, which is Thursday uh, US and European time at the usual time. Uh, but we do go earlier now. So mm -hmm. I go at nine o'clock my time, which I think is around about four o'clock uh, New York time and it's 2 p.m. LA time uh, so that that's changing yeah, due to the fact that I then can use the rest <laughs> of the day I don't lose the rest of the day so uh, it will be on on Friday as well so apart from that everyone uh, thanks so much for the show today leave any questions that you've thanks, got guys. down below uh, love to know your opinion about everything Jim's probably gonna fire up yes. about Luna <laughs> <laughs> it's a good yeah, no. uh, oh, we're fine we anyone can have an opinion or whatever anyway that's the beauty of what we do exactly. so yeah it's great uh, apart from that everyone we'll see you all uh in the next show so thanks everyone bye for now bye guys thank you I